doing? I'm trying to record a podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Your Natural Dog with Angela Ardolino. And my guest today is Erin Scott. She is the host of Believe in Dog podcast. She's also an incredible lover of dogs, volunteering and helping and learned so much in the process that she realized that she needed to create something to help us keep track of our dog's health. Um, helped her dogs, helped so many. You're going to really enjoy this dog, uh, this podcast. <laughs> Stay tuned with Aaron Scott. Next. Introducing Myco Dog, a line of mushroom extracts combined with adaptogens like ashwagandha, astragalus root, and bacopa muniri, made specifically for dogs. The mushrooms in our tinctures are grown in the wild in the Pacific Northwest and are triple extracted from the fruiting bodies of the mushrooms. These tinctures are meant to support dogs with dementia and canine cognitive disorder, breathing and respiratory issues, and autoimmune diseases and even cancer. Click on the link below to learn more about how Myco Dog can help your dog live their very best life naturally. Hey, everybody. It's Angela Ardolino with Your Natural Dog, and I'm excited about my guest today because she's one of those badass, awesome pet parents who found a need in our little community, our holistic community, and did something about it, and I love it. Erin Scott, thank you for um, joining me today. And the best part is that you also have a podcast, and I didn't know that. (laughs) Two. And I just discovered today you have two with our other friend in the holistic world, uh, Kimberly Gauthier. And did I say her name right? Gauthier? Gauthier. Gauthier. Yeah. Gauthier. She's got that fancy French last name, (laughs) um, who uh, has her awesome podcast. And we've had her on also. And I saw we I saw Aaron recently at the Healthy Dog Workshop where Dr. Karen Becker and Rodney were speaking. Um, Dr. Lori Koger puts it on every single year. And um, that's where we got to talk. And I am assuming that's where I found out about your Healthy Dog Journal. But before we get to that, uh, we, let's talk about um, what were your favorite things and takeaways from the Healthy Dog Workshop. And those of you that don't know about it, it's basically where all the holistics come together together. And um, it's a great event that happens every year. And of course, we didn't get to see each other for two years. And now all of us get to come to one place and see each other with kind of our favorite holistic brands and our favorite holistic, um, I don't know, what are they? Icons, spokespeople, yes. whatever it is. What, <laughs> um, yeah, because you're in Baltimore and yes. it was in um, Albany. So you flew all the way out there, which is kind of cool because we got people all over. We had some people from all over the world. But um, what was your favorite takeaway from it? So I think the the thing I hope everybody who was there got to take away is that when Rodney was speaking, he shared a quote about being willing to learn, unlearn, and relearn new information. And I just think that's so important. We're always learning. You know, we're always trying to do the best that we can do and be willing to take in new information and change what we're doing to help our dogs or to help ourselves. And uh, I, I hope that that's something that everybody was there was able to take away. But, oh, my gosh, it was so wonderful be, being there and hearing all the speakers and, and seeing all the people you follow on social media. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and in person. Yeah. And I love, I love that concept because when I think about when I started my journey, um, learning about medical cannabis and the benefits. And of course I learned about it because I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and wanted to take something that was all natural for it. Um, I was only given a prescription medication, which led to um, lymphoma, along with all kinds of other problems. And this is what we're going to find often in our um, pets medications also. I mean, imagine that I'm getting a medication that's going to, that's linked to lymphoma um, and it's regulated like crazy. Imagine in our pet world where it's not regulated, where there's literally drugs that are given to our dogs that are not approved for the use in dogs. Um, And our dogs are giving our being prescribed these things all the time. So when I just look at what I've learned, and I'm sure what you've learned, and feeding, for instance, or supplementation, or uh, fish oil. That's a good one. You know, just the the things of, and it's kind of funny because once these things become popular 
and we we see we some of our favorite vets are recommending them. People are using them at, with great success. We're going to have a company that comes in and either buys that company, changes the formulation, or a whole bunch of products that are not good are going to flood the market to compete with that. Right. Of course, uh, CBD being one of the worst. Right. And now we're getting into medicinal mushrooms where I see the same thing happening again. And I think it's going to be worse than CBD. Um, but as, as, uh, these pe- as us as pet parents, we have to be able to, there's going to be new research. There's going to be things. I tell people in cannabis medicine, it's gonna, we're going to find out that these certain strains that are high in certain compounds are going to be specific for certain diseases and ailments, but we're not there yet. So now mm. why not have all of the compounds in the plant and the medicine you know, to work? What are some of the things that like you have taken exactly what Rodney said, that you learned something, it changed, it got better, you know, advanced, you had to unlearn it and go a different direction. Is there anything in particular? So I would definitely say with feeding, when we started working with a new vet who was very much into traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, and, you know, we had been doing a raw diet, but for instance, I would give them lamb. And then we learned about like lamb being very hot yeah. and very warming. And so with one of our dogs, we really should not give him lamb anymore. So that was you know, new information that, that we've done and, and tried to shape their diets around their, um, you know, their traditional Chinese medicine needs. Right. I, I remember learning that also where certain proteins like chicken and chicken is in everything, you guys, and it is right. a hot protein that causes inflammation. So if you eat or feed your chicken, your dog chicken every single day, you're actually causing inflammation inside their body. On top of that, chicken is the most factory farmed um, animal. And the if the if that animal is not living the way it should and eating the things it should, it does not have any nutritious nutri- nutrient value to it. You're literally feeding your dog something that could be toxic versus something that's really good for them. So that's really important. Uh, but I love that you brought that up. Um, so uh, when we hear this, it doesn't mean because I, I think it's a very interesting concept because I've watched some vets do this where they preached about one thing, things changed, and now we got to, and I don't, I think that it's very important. I maybe end up being doing this in cannabis where, you know, I find out that a CBG strain instead of a CBD strain is better than, you know, whatever. We, we never know. Right. But um, what I do know is that if it's natural, if it's not sprayed with any chemicals or pesticides or whatever that it's most likely going to be an all natural thing. And we can at least start with that basis. Right. Um, but yeah, be careful of, of those beliefs that you hold or the raw feeding that you hold, because yeah, I could, we could have all run out and said, you better feed your dog raw and feed them the wrong thing. Also right. finding, talk about learn, unlearn or whatever. I don't know how old your dogs are. How old are they? Uh, Penny's probably about 12 and Nino is eight. Okay, great. So you're dealing with a geriatric and a senior dog. I don't know about you. I have a rescue. So I have lots of dogs and all, all of them now are geriatric or seniors and they all I have switched except for Nina off of a raw diet onto a gently cooked or sous vide Mm. or whatever type of diet. Um, because I find that older dogs become more sensitive. Nina is a large breed, so I don't, for whatever reason, can handle it better. I don't know. But I'm finding all my old geriatric dogs, I'm actually having to switch off and start cooking or find a gently cooked recipe type of things. We change. We absolutely change. Yeah, we change. actually do the gently cooked for Nino because he has some digestive issues. Yes, awesome. And he's the, he's the 12-year-old? He's the 8-year-old. Oh, 8-year-old. But He's just had chronic stomach issues. And I think that's important. I'm glad that you said that because every single dog is an individual and different, meaning this uh, full spectrum hemp extract with this diet and this medicinal mushroom may work great for this dog, but it doesn't mean that same dosage is going to work for the next dog because every dog is completely different. Right. So you've created something that I actually tried to start to create two years ago, which makes me laugh because you said it took you two years. <laughs> um, and it's what I forgot what you call it. The dog. What's your dog journal? Dog health journal. Dog health journal. And the reason that 
I'm so proud of you for accomplishing this and that it's such a need in our community. I, I'm going to go ahead and explain, let you explain why you created it and then you working with the vets on consultations. Um, but why did you create this? And then I'm going to go ahead and chime in if you miss anything to tell you, <laughs> tell everyone why it's so important that they should do this. Well, it was initially born out of my dog Penny's health issues. And it was actually during sort of 2020 quarantine time that uh, she had started having problems with her feet. She was having all these sores on her feet and we couldn't get it under control. It was like spreading up her leg. Um, wow. you know, she had like draining tracks. And again, you know, we're doing raw feeding. We're doing all these supplements. Like I thought we Why were doing is this all happening? the things. Right? right. And I started working with a new vet during that time. And she was telling me things like, okay, I want you to do Epsom salt foot soaks one week. And then I want you to do green tea foot soaks the next week. And we're going to see like, which one did one work better than the other. And I was trying to find a way to like track all these things that we were doing. We were trying new supplements and, you know, I was like taking photos of, of like her feet each day. Cause I'm like, does this look better? Does it look worse? I don't know. And how do I keep track of all this? And so it just sort of was born out of me trying to organize myself because I have constant like notepads and post-its and papers everywhere. And, and I wanted to like get everything all in one place. Um, but what I, I think is interesting is that my history, as you're kind of saying, for the last 11 years, I've done a lot of volunteer work here in Baltimore. And what we do is these pop-up veterinary clinics in like underserved, under-resourced communities where people don't have access to veterinary care. They don't have transportation to veterinary care. And what I have been a part of is over 2000 vet consults. Uh, I usually fill out all the paperwork, you know, take all the notes, you know, assist the veterinarians during these consults. So I have all this information of like trying to see, well, what information do they need? What questions are they asking? And it helps me sort of be a little more informed than maybe your average pet parent about like what information our vets need, what kind of questions are they asking about behavior, about how long this is going on. And you know, I always say like our dogs can't talk. So we have to kind of interpret this, like, how do we know if they're not feeling well? And so what actually ended up happening with Penny, she had an ear infection during this whole couple month process of trying to get her health under control. And we gave her, you know, this drops in her ears, very common medication that is used all day, every day by vets all around the country. And the next day, uh, Fortunately, it was quarantine and I was working from home and the mailman came and she did not bark at the mailman. And I thought that was really strange. And then a little while later, I had to leave the house. And when I came back home, she was laying right by the front door, but she did not, she was asleep and she did not respond to me. And I started looking through all of my notes in this early iteration of the health journal and realized we just put these drops in her ear. Could this be affecting her hearing? And so I contacted our vet and said, could these be affecting her hearing at all? Because some strange things happen. And she calls me like five minutes later, like, oh, my God, don't give her these. It can cause an ototoxicity reaction in like this minute percentage of dogs. And so we actually ended up saving her hearing. It took a couple months before her hearing actually came back, but I was able to look, you know, right away at like what had been changing. And I know my dog, you know, I always say pet, as pet parents, we're experts in our dogs and we know their behaviors and their routines. And we know when they're not responding to something that they you know, normally would. So I feel so fortunate that she, you know, was able to regain her hearing after that, but that was a really scary couple days. Wow. And do you know if the, when you did the eardrops, did the things on her feet start after that? No, no. Um, that the, was something that happening. Ears, yeah. Same. I think everything was just kind of spreading. <laughs> it was all very yeasty, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah. So that, that wow. happened after. That's incredible. And what a great way for you to pay attention. And then yeah. be like, today she didn't bark at the the mailman for some reason. And today <laughs> she, you know, whatever. That is amazing that uh, you discovered that and then were able to share it with your vet. I also like what the vet did about, you know, trying different um, holistic remedies versus, I don't know about you guys or about you, I'd much rather give my dog an Epsom salt foot bath or a green tea foot bath than just constantly bombarding them with different prescription medications that I know are just going to hurt them. So lucky for you that you've got a vet willing to do that. Neither one of those things are going to hurt. They're only going to help. And if they cure the issue, even better. Even better. So why not try it? Right. You've got <laughs> nothing to lose. When a prescription med can literally, A, 
even an airdrop, as you just said, can cause damage and um, take the dog's gut to recuperate from, which why would we give a dog something? So I also have sat on lots of consultations with people. And I'm sure as you saw, there is a same thing happening over and over and over again, which I realized, which was, and a lot of times our consultations are second opinions um, they want to make sure how can they, or prescription convention didn't work. So they want to find out what they can do holistically. How do right. they detox from something so that they can go a more holistic route? Um, but nine times out of 10, I see over prescribing of meds that dogs don't need where we're, I, and I, I, I don't do these consultations with myself. I do them with a vet, um, Dr. Sarah Urban, Dr. Zach Pilisoff, where they're, Dr. Zach will literally go, why are you why are you giving them that? Why did they tell you you were taking that medication? And they don't know why. They're just doing it because the doctor told them to. Right. When you went down that black hole, looked at it, called the vet, is it possible? And then the vet chimed in and go, "Yes, yeah, stop immediately." kind <laughs> type of thing. But there is a, a there is a problem in our country with an overprescribing of antibiotics, uh steroids, and these may temporarily bring relief to our pets, but in the long run, they're not helping them with whatever the issue. They're just suppressing the immune system. And then a lot of times it's going to wreck their microbiome and they're going to end up getting something else or getting sick. And now what have we done? But one of the things we can do is we can keep track of these things and log these things. Mm -hmm. um, often in our consultations, we'll find, you know, when did he experience that seizure? When did he lose hearing like you? When did you notice this type of thing? And you really will be able to figure out a lot by keeping track, just right. like you did. Um, so that must have been unbelievable. You're like, well, proved my journal works. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was how I felt, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then what? You're like, okay, I got to make this so that every all, all pet parents can use it? Yeah, I just, you know, I just always feel like if there's something that, that I know or something that I've been through that can help somebody else, I always want to do that. Right. And, uh, me too. You know, and my vet had said to me, like, I wish all of my patients had this. Like, could you reproduce this so I can give it out to people? So that's what kind of started me on trying to figure out, well, can I? Awesome. <laughs> and it, um, it's been way more complicated than I ever could have anticipated. I know. I know it is. <laughs> well, we have to take a short break. Um, when we come back, I want to talk about some of the other things that you've learned and um, about your podcast. And then of course, tell everybody how they can um, get a copy of your health dog journal, dog health journal. I don't know why I can't say it in the right order. When we come back right after this. So this is Bruce. Bruce is a 12 year old pug and he has had a lot of issues over his life. But for the past several years, he's had a really weird hacking, coughing issue that no one has been able to get under control. Um, it's nothing infectious, it's just kind of a result of his little flat-faced breed and the respiratory issues they usually deal with. And I have finally found something that worked. It's called Breathe by MycoDog. It's a mushroom extract and it has been incredible how quickly I saw results. Literally overnight I saw a difference um, in the hacking and coughing, especially during the night he was doing it. So the breathe tincture has really made a huge difference for him, not only with his breathing, but just overall supporting his immune system since he has two other dogs in our household that go to daycare every day and bring home various germs and respiratory bugs themselves. And he has been totally healthy and clear of any issues since being on this tincture. So we are just super grateful that finally something is out there for these flat faced breeds to breathe better and live a happier life. All right, we are back with Your Natural Dog with Erin Scott, the creator of the Healthy Dog Journal, which I am so excited she created since I started probably at the same time. Wouldn't that have been fun if we had met two years ago? And I am too. I should try <laughs> to find it and send it to you. It was going to be like this big. Um, but yeah, we were talking about how your journal is online so that you can keep track of everything, which I think most people will love, but you and I prefer being able to write it down yes. you know, <laughs> and keep track. But you, so what you're, you now have a podcast. Um, yes. what, what made you start a podcast? Just the wanting to share what you were learning. So when I originally started the podcast, I guess it started more of a 
as a, just a personal mission. I had, I actually, uh, I'm a breast cancer survivor and I had just sort of come out of this long, crazy journey. And wow. I, I actually, I turned 40 the same week that I got my port removed and became a, a survivor. And I, wow. I was kind of having this whole new decade and new energy, you know, and because of all the the volunteer work and the animal welfare people I know, like I've met some people that have some really interesting stories and I met, you know, I've gone to different conferences. I've met people all around the country and, and I just love talking to people and hearing their stories. And I thought, you know, I'd, I have all this stuff inside me and, and I just want to you know, be able to have these kind of conversations and share with the world, like you should hear how, how this person got started and why this organization came into existence or why this company started. Or, you know, I have a, a friend who left a corporate job and she's now a trick dog trainer and her dogs have been in like Chewy.com commercials and Mercedes Aww. Benz commercials. And, you know, and everybody has these stories that kind of came out of love and, you know, everything's kind of built out of this love for their dogs or this dog came into their life and just sort of changed everything. And, and, um, Back in 2019, there weren't quite as many dog podcasts as there are now, but you know, a lot of them were very focused on training or something like that. And I just kind of wanted an outlet to just have people share their stories. So that's how the Believe in Dog podcast started. Cool. And how, what have you learned since doing your, doing the podcast? I've like, it has just grown <laughs> way more than I ever could have anticipated. And the people I've gotten to connect with are amazing. And, uh, you know, I get to talk to people who have written books and, and just, uh, you know, just hearing how, how the love of everybody's, the love that everyone has for their dog has, you know, inspired them. And I just, I always say dogs can be healers and teachers and inspirations in our lives. And, and I love everybody who comes on to, to share that kind of story. And, and I think it, you know, I like putting love and goodness out into the world. And so, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, uh, it, it's been great to, to be able to share that. Awesome. Um, for, so your dogs, Tell me about your dog. So you have a 12 year old. What is your secret for your 12 year old? What kind of dog is she? <laughs> so uh, that's Penny. And, Penny. Uh, she's a, like a pit bull mix. And I literally found her in an alley in Baltimore. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, my friend does cat TNR. So we were out trapping cats and here wow. comes this skinny, saggy mama pit bull with a little scabby and missing fur. and. <laughs> So, um, so she's been with us for seven years now. I don't know exactly how old she is. I'm guessing when I say 12, but she's, you know, she went gray pretty soon after we, we got her, but I mean, she, Penny and I have the same chiropractor. She treats both awesome. animals and people. Oh, you're lucky. And That's so awesome. I know. <laughs> I, Do you get I to go with her? her? No. <laughs> oh, I was like, that would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess they have like laws about like you can't have animals in the health, you know, the people health facility. <laughs> Makes no sense. But, uh, and then, you know, she gets acupuncture and she gets ozone treatments and she's actually had several of the, you know, fecal microbiome transplants. And that's actually kind of what helped cure all of her foot ailments and, you know, all oh, her awesome. yeast that, issues. I was going to say, how did you, uh, how did you deal with it? Yeah, that's what we ended up doing. We ended up realizing she had had four courses of antibiotics in one year and had, horrible gut health. And we realized that because I went through all her vet records and made this whole chart for the, for the journal. And, and that's when we were like, okay, here, here's a potential issue. <laughs> you guys, what, what Aaron is doing is exactly what we all need to do when something comes up is to go, what is different? Um, what's crazy is that, so my, I started this journey, gosh, uh, Odie's 12, I, I'm sorry, Odie's 15. So over 15 years ago now, because I lost my first miniature schnauzer at age seven and I did everything my conventional vet did. Didn't question it, didn't keep track of anything, whatever he said I did. So of course, when I lost her at age seven, I was like, I am not doing anything I did last time. I'm going to take control. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to keep track. But it was interesting because she, Lucy got sick and died. Of course, now I know why, but, um, then I had just moved into a new house. So I thought for sure it was something in the mm -hmm. new house or in the yard or the lake or the, you know, what is it type of thing. Um, so I really did start keeping track of everything, but realizing that it was the kibble, the over vaccination, the flea and tick, the over vaccination every single year. I did it all. I did it all bad. And now I get to look and have, I have a miniature schnauzer who's 15 years old. Aww. So I know I can't compare apples to apples, but I get to say I doubled 
this dog's life span. Yeah. without with doing all of the right things. And, right. and just like you said, with the Rodney speech, did the things I was doing in the beginning have already changed? Yes, absolutely. Right. I didn't have an answers pet food back, right. you know, back then, which of course now I don't feed my dog's answers pet food because <laughs> it's not the same company. So um, it is really hard out there for pet parents, especially those like us that are trying to do the right thing every single day by our pets, because literally the world is against us. Yes. Even when we find a good pet food, it changes or gets bought out. I don't know if you know this. I also own stores to supply stores and groom right. shops. And I'm constantly going, okay, got to, got to discontinue the primal now. Like just keeping up with who's being bought and changed and whatever is so complicated. Um, so I know it's difficult for pet parents out there, especially trying to do it the natural, more holistic way. And I really believe that this journal will help you. Every consultation that we've done, we have asked them to journal and keep track of everything. So I want to thank you so much for creating this <laughs> and spending two years and know that you didn't waste your time because <laughs> a lot of people are going to use this. Um, I tried to make it easy and fun to do, do these things. And my graphic designer laughed when I asked her to find different poop shapes. So that way you can awesome. just circle what your dog looks like. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and and knowing that um, you said you gave your dog four, have, has done, have done fecal transplant four times. Yeah, yeah. Over the course of her food. The understanding that it's, uh, I just did a fecal transplant for the second time on Odie, my 15 year old, but that really will help set their gut straight. If yes. they did have antibiotics, if they did something go wrong, it's not going to cause them any harm. So you can support them by doing this um, fecal transplant. And it's easy. It's animal biome. You just have to buy animal biome. They have a large dog and a small dog uh, capsule that you give them to every day. So this is something that's one of the easiest things that you can do to help their gut. If for some reason um, you think they had a toxic overload from prescription meds or antibiotics or like Nina, my Doberman who just got her leg amputated, had to go through anesthesia and antibiotics and all that. So absolutely want to, you know, reset her gut. Right. Um, so from your experience and what you've learned, um, what else can you tell our pet parents? Cause I think it's paying attention and, and, you know, logging these things really will be an eye opener for us. Yeah. And I, I think one of the biggest things is just sort of having the courage to go outside the box and, and look for, keep looking for answers. If you're working with a vet and you don't think your dog is getting better, I think sometimes we have to give ourselves permission that we can keep looking for answers because, you know, we see this vet, like I didn't go to vet school. What do I know? And why should I believe somebody I read on the internet or something? And so I think it takes a little bit of, of like mental fortitude to be able to be like, I'm going to go in a different direction. And Right. And uh, and I'm going to give or maybe, you know, you're working with a conventional vet, but you're giving CBD anyway. And, you know, and it, like sometimes you just have to kind of go out, go outside the box and, and be willing to trust that, that you're doing the right thing for your dog. Um, and take charge. You yeah. know, I'm sure just like you with your health scare that you had to take charge of your own health and decide, oh, yes. OK, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put the whatever it is. We have to do the same thing with our pet's health because a conventional vet is taught, not taught anything about diet and nutrition. Right. They're not taught anything about the endocannabinoid system. So they are limited on what they can do. If your dog's coming in with diarrhea, they don't, they don't know what to do. An integrative or a holistic is going to know what to do because they have trained themselves past what they learned once they get out of got out of school. So remember that, you know, a conventional vet is going to be great for if you've got to take something out or put something back together. Otherwise, they're going to turn to the prescription pad because that's all they were taught. Mm -hmm. um, so understand that you may have a good convention vet that's good on some things, but you still have to take it into your own hands and find out what's great out there. Um, you know, even there are products that were sold to vets that uh, that don't work very well. So maybe they haven't been able to unlearn, relearn, and then implement things um, because they're so busy. And there's a shortage. So finding right. a good vet is really hard, just like finding a good doctor is really hard. And when you find one, you usually have to wait. <laughs> um, so taking control of their own health, logging what's going on so that when you do get that awesome vet or you 
have a telehealth uh, consultation with a, a vet online that you're able to go, this happened on this date. He had this on this date. I've noticed ever since that this has been happening. Um, so that journal is really important right. uh, for them. Um, tell us how people can get in touch with you, listen to your podcast. I know you also do another podcast, so tell them about that one. How do they uh, find you? Sure. So yes, I also do a second podcast that's called The Alternative Dog Moms. And that's with Kimberly and I. We just started. There's only a few episodes on so far. And, uh, you know, we talk about all these things, all the, you know, healthy dog expo we talked about, uh, we, we have a good time over there. And, uh, yeah, so you can find me at believe in dog podcast.com or my blog and the health journal are through hugs and belly robes.com. Awesome. And you can get a, a discount on yes. the healthy dog at healthy dog journal by putting in coupon code Y N D for your natural dog. Yes. Um, you'll get $2 off that journal. And I highly recommend it. I am going to, from now on in all my consults, tell people to get this and download it. So, or I mean, fill it out online. One day we'll do a print version. If I can help yeah. you do that, I'm going to help you um, <laughs> because I think I would love to have my own little Me too. Hard copy of it. <laughs> Me too. Um, if we could put a cute little outside on it, we'll yes, do something. I already, yeah, I know. Good, good. It's so hard to get things printed. I know, <laughs> it is. And expensive. <laughs> um, it absolutely is. I used to do a magazine, so I know how that was. It was my bis biggest expense every month was printing that dang magazine. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and inspiring so many uh, pet parents to take control and figure out what's going on. I really appreciate you spreading that good good information out there in the world. Well, thank, thank you, you so, much so much for having me. It you was bet. an honor. <laughs> Thanks.